Hey everybody, it's Jason Will. Just want to take a quick second to remind you that my Impact Agent University conference is happening this April 11th and 12th, 2019 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Get your tickets at impactagentuniversity.com and use promo code JASON10 for a 10% discount off your tickets. Ready? Ready to rock and roll? Is that action? All right. Okay. Oh, that's right. All right. Absolutely. Go. 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 Hello, everybody. It's Jason Will with Go. 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 This is a real estate podcast, but but we talk about leadership, personal growth, and becoming the best version of yourself. Leadership, check one, two, check one, two. Growth, best version of yourself. Go. 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 So this is a real estate podcast. Jason Posnick. Welcome to the Impact Agent Podcast. We're live. What's going on, handsome? What's going on up there in the Boston area? Well, it's about is it cold? 20 degrees. Oh it's my gosh. freezing. We're getting snow this weekend too, which is brutal. But we'll be in New Orleans soon enough. I know. It's going to be like, that's the perfect weekend because it won't be too warm and too humid. It should be sunshine and just very mild temperatures. So it'll be awesome. I'm excited, man. New Orleans, I've, I've heard good things. You've I'm never right. been? I've been, but it was way back in the day and it was very touristy. So I'm excited to actually get to experience the music festival and all that. Okay. I was going to say, because you may go a little bit wild if you've never been <laughs> before. But uh, yeah. And one point I'm trying to stress is if you're looking to put together any dinners or anything, it will be a little bit harder to get reservations if you want to go someplace nice. So yeah. just gotta be thinking about that if you want to put any dinners together. But let's let's jump right in. I really enjoyed your, your 5 a.m. club call. I got some good takeaways about that. You know, there's the narrative right now is really, really big. It's huge. It's life in general too. It's not even just business, right? Your narrative and how you view yourself and the things you do and the people you're with is going to define you because at the end of the day, what you focus on is what you become. And if you're focusing your narrative on what you're not good at or what you're scared of or change or all these things that you can't even control it's going to debilitate you analysis or paralysis by analysis, right? And so my goal with the agents here on the team is get them to think in a positive mindset versus I can't do this or this is overwhelming. What can I do, right? Control your sales. Don't worry about the wind. The wind's going to control itself by doing the right activities. You're going to get the right outcome. Yeah. So I was just at a Craig Ballantyne mastermind in Santa Monica last week. And the big thing there, one of the big takeaways was just, and it sounds, I think it sounds corny to most people, but it's the I am statements. So mm-hmm. I am a great cold caller. I'm a great scripter. I'm a great, you know, uh, listing presentation, you know, deliverer, whatever it is. It's just getting it, whatever you want to accomplish, just saying, I am that. Or yes. I'm going to be that. Yes. And I mean, I think it's funny is in this office, you'll hear Lisa or me, if an agent ever says like, I suck at role playing or I can't do that. Lisa or I, or even another agent will be like, bad affirmation, change it. We'll make them say the opposite. And I've got a great story. So I have an agent, her name's Sandra. I'm giving her a massive call out slash shout out right now. She got her license in like May of 2018. Three months in, she had two deals fall through. She called me, I remember like it was yesterday, called me on a Friday afternoon at like 4.30, 5 p.m., live it. And she was like, Jason, give it to me straight. Can I do this? Is this for me? And I was giving her all my positive stuff. And she said to me at one point, goes, I don't want your positive bullshit. Can I do this? Wow. I said to her, I was like, it's not bullshit. It's real. Because once you start thinking positive and taking positive action, you're going to have positive outcomes. We talked and talked and talked. Thanked me after. Fast forward now. In the last three months, she's closed over $800,000 almost every single month. She crushed August, September, October, November. She had two closings in January. She has one for February set up already. And she's working on some for March. And now she might be the most positive person I've ever met in my life. This girl posts Facebook statuses and quotes. And if you ever talk to her, you'll see that the first thing she focuses on is the positive. That's incredible. I think agents need to hear that. They need to like hear real life stories that this stuff actually works. Yes. And it does work. And that's why I love events like this, right? So like going to impact agent, people are going to go for a number of reasons, right? You might go because you want to learn something really cool or a tool or lead generation or way to build your business. You might go because you want to meet people and build connections and network because that will also build your business, building relationships with other agents. Yes, they can help you. You can learn from them. They can support you. They can also send you referrals, right? But even on top of that, going to a place like this with positive people, taking positive action and crushing goals every day is what's going to help you reframe your mind if it's not already in that state. So if you're somebody who has this negative mindset or you have a negative narrative or you feel like you're always having negative self-talk about yourself, going to events like this will teach you how to change that. And that's why one reason why I love this stuff. 
Yeah, me too. Me too. All right. So what are you guys planning on bringing to the stage in terms of value in your talk? So first of all, I'm honored to be on the stage. And I think Jason knows pretty well. I love bringing value to people, right? My whole background, my whole life has been around helping people develop themselves, whether it be personally, professionally, spiritually, emotionally. I want to help people be a better them and achieve the goals that they think they can't and get them to realize that they can. And even if it takes a little kick in the butt, tough love is still love, right? So Lisa and I, since I joined the team in June of 2017, when I joined, it was seven agents, counting Lisa. The team blew up in August. We lost everybody. I questioned everything I did in leaving medical device sales and coming to this. And now look at us, 39 agents strong. We closed 344 units last year. Our goal for 2019 is over 800 units. And I'm very confident we're going to hit it because of the culture we've built, the people we bring on. When building a team is as important as production is, what we've learned is that what's more important than production is the character and the values. So we don't hire based on production or how much money someone's going to make. We hire them based on their characteristics and their values and making sure that they align with the team. Wow, that's big. I love that. And I'm still stuck on this tough love is still love because, you know, when we're talking about on our team, like we've been fighting for the last couple of years to try to break 100 million and we just keep, you know, coming close. And when the team is like, what's going to get us over that threshold, I think it's more tough love, more accountability, whatever you want to call it. But we're quick to remind each other, or we should be, that accountability is the highest form of love because, yes, I mean, if we are, we break a hundred million, there's just more revenue in everybody's pockets, which they can have more life experiences and take care of people, whether it's giving back, you know, philanthropy, whatever it is, you have more so you can do more. A hundred percent. And I mean, I'm the first one to be a cheerleader, right? I'm the first one to congratulate an agent, high five them, boom, right? Every time I do something good, we got booms going left and right in this house. But at the end of the day, accountability is huge. And I love nothing more than when, for example, we have something called touch scores. And it's a score based on when an agent gets a new lead or a new client, are they hitting the appropriate touches and the appropriate speed to lead? And I've got a group of agents who fell below that mark. And rather than being punitive and taking their lead shifts or any of these things, I met with them. And the first thing I asked them was, what's going on, right? How are we feeling? How are we doing? What can I do? And then we talked about the touch score. I asked them why it was falling behind and why things were happening and how that was affecting their business. Then I asked them, I said, guys, girls, out of the seven of you, what do you guys want me to do to help you get this up? How can I hold you accountable? And it was funny because all of them looked at me and said, well, if we don't do it by the end of the week, take our, take our leads, take our lead shifts. I don't want to do that. I don't want to take money out of your pocket. What I would rather do is help you become better and improve your touch score so you're converting more, making more money, and we don't have to have this conversation again. So then we talked and I said, how about this? We create a system of accountability where if your touch score isn't above 60% by Friday, you're in the office five days a week, four hours a day, so that we can work together to go through your leads and make sure it gets there. And they were all like, oh my God, I love that. Now, Jason, I expected them to be like, well, we don't want to do that. Don't micromanage us. And I said to them, do you guys want to be micromanaged or do you want me just to let you do it on your own? Every single one of them said, please micromanage me. Please text me every day and remind me of what I'm being held accountable to and why. And it worked and it made it a positive outcome versus them coming to the office because they have to is because they wanted to get better. When I would text them in the morning and say, Agent X, what are the hours you're going to be in today? It wasn't to micromanage them. They knew it was because to help them. And they gave me permission to do that because they know I'm not doing it so I can make money on them. I'm doing it to help them get better. All right. A lot of things I want to just point out some, you know, just kind of some recap takeaways from people watching this. Number one, you're going to bring like a ton of energy to the stage. And I think that energy and, you know, your attitude and just the positivity is a big part of what is making the culture of your team really, really successful right now. So if somebody's wanting to build a team, you know, you're going to be a great person to network with, or maybe they're, they have a team and the team kind of sucks and they, they need a sales. <laughs> They needed Jason Posnick to, to, to really turn things around like morale wise and keep people motivating. So that's going to be really, really strong. The other thing you guys do is systems. I mean, you've got all these mm-hmm. systems. So I got to give you kudos for a minute. So I did an, a consult with an agent of mine. We actually did it. Uh, we recorded it and we're going to put the audio out. But nice. he was talking about the courthouse system. 
Mm -hmm. And how we implemented that quartile system, it sucked. The agents hated it. But Megan stuck to her guns and kept it implemented. And that, she had a really slow end to her summer. And she had to pull money out of her savings account to pay her mortgage. So she felt the pain of that. And then Mm -hmm. she felt the pain of being in the bottom quartile. And both of those two pain points just lit a fire under her butt. And in December, she put seven pendings together. And she's just got this momentum and she feels like so good. Good. And I was teaching a, a, one of our power lunches in Mobile before the holidays, and I was talking to an agent that I thought had a lot of potential and could have a potentially bright future. But we were talking about coaching. She's got nobody to hold her accountable. She's not on a team, didn't want to join a team. And then I was like, well, you need to hire a coach. And she's like, well, what is the, like the baseline price for a coach? And I was like, you're probably looking at about five ninety nine dollars a month, somewhere around that. She just looked at me like I, I was crazy. But there is a big difference if you look at the independent agents versus what's happening with your team. There's a big difference. Yeah. And I mean, the difference is that the biggest issue with this industry is that anyone can do it. And that's awesome. And I love that anyone can get into this and follow their dream and their passion and sell houses and help buyers and sellers. But that's also the biggest issue because anyone can take the 40 hour course, pass a test and get a license. And what this does, this system of getting into this industry does is it doesn't breed professionals. It breeds people. It forces people into an industry where they have this expectation of X, but actually what they can achieve is Y on their own. And so what the team is for really is that accountability, that training, that development is huge because at the end of the day, yes, you can take the course, you can read a book, you can watch YouTube videos on how to sell and scripts, and you can create a farm and you can spend money on lead gen. But if you don't have the people, the support to actually make sure you're getting things done, you're screwed, right? We were talking about the commission roller coaster, and that doesn't happen on this team because every time an agent feels like they're starting to hit that lull, they've got someone else to pick them up and remind them what to do. And the best way to get out of a slump is to take action. You know, I find a lot of independent agents are not generating leads online, and they're certainly not picking up the phone on a consistent basis. So I think one thing, if we can hammer this home for people to watch this, because I want to post in the group and I want to get them to watch it to the end, but you talked about speed to lead. So for somebody mm-hmm. who is just not familiar or maybe wants to you know, get into online lead generation, describe what you're talking about there with speed to lead. So getting leads is great, right? Anyone can go call Zillow or Realtor or start a farm. Generating leads is an art, but that's not where you're going to make your money. The thing with leads that's really important is the conversion, right? So the national average for conversion of online leads from a home searching website is about two and a half percent. Our team hovers between 11% and 12%. And that's because of speed to lead, war dialing, and 10 days of pain. Now, speed to lead is literally the amount of time it takes you to call the lead once they come in. So if I get a lead at 1 p.m., I better be calling them by 101 at the latest, right? And now what that does for you is you're catching the client, the lead, when their interest is peaked, when their urgency is at its utmost. And ideally, they're still in front of their computer. Looking at homes and searching for homes is front of mind at that moment. So subconsciously, you're catching them at the right time, right? They want to talk about it. Now, let's say you call them and you have great speed of lead and they don't answer, Jason. Well, half the battle, more than half the battle is getting them on the phone so you can bring massive value, build a relationship, and show them how you can help them. So we have this thing called war dialing. And I actually created this when I was managing the sales force for a construction company. We had inside sales agents throughout the country. And what we found was that the first time somebody saw a phone number they didn't answer within a short period of time, it was a 12% chance they answered that call. 12% is not that good, right? And the whole point of Speed Elite is to get them on the phone. The whole point of getting them on the phone is to book the appointment. But if you don't get them on the phone, you can't do it. So then we ran a little test. And we said, if someone doesn't answer the first time, we're going to hang up and we're going to call them again. The second time that same person sees that same phone number in a short period of time, it goes from 12% to a 47% chance they answer. Now, the third time they see that same phone number in a short period of time, it goes up to 88%. Now, I love war dialing, A, because it works, B, because it makes you uncomfortable and it makes you get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's where success lies. So every time I do new onboarding with agents, we talk about war dialing. And every single one of them rolls their eyes at me and says, oh my God, I'm terrified. I'm going to bother somebody. It works. At the end of the day, it's the tone of the salesperson, the attitude of the salesperson that dictates the tone of the conversation and the relationship that follows. So we wore out. I had an agent yesterday, brand new, got a lead, called them, did an answer, called back. What do you know? They answered. And the first thing they said was, why did you call me twice in a row? And she was nervous and she was shaking and she felt bad. And then she took a deep breath, remembered what we taught her. And she went right to, Hey, Mr. Mrs. Buyer, you know, I didn't mean to bother you. I just want to make sure I got through to you. 
saw you clicked on one, two, three main street, wanted to get back to you. How long have you been looking? Boom. Booked a buyer consult for this Saturday with him and his wife. What was the percentage on the second dial? The second dial goes 12%, 47%, 88%. What's great about this is you are in full control of it as an agent. You're in control whether or not you execute on this activity. If you can increase your chances to get them on the phone from 12% to 88%, why wouldn't you at least try it? So war dialing is the secret sauce to your conversion rate being so astronomically higher than the industry average. Pairing war dialing with speed to lead, yes. And then obviously you have to have good scripts because if you get them on the phone and you don't know what to say or how to say it, you're going to lose them, right? And how you say things is more important than even what you say. I know we've talked about you know words, tonality, and body language. Mm-hmm. You have to know what to say. So you got to role play, you got to practice. All right, so I've got this point I want to make, but at the same time, you just reminded me of something that one of the other things that is plaguing our industry right now is that these agents are more concerned on the opportunity than they are on the tactic. Or So let's say I'm all about generating leads, but when I generate the leads or when opportunity comes my way, I don't know what to say, so I lose the opportunity. Right. And so that's why the scripting is so important. Real estate agents just notoriously are bad at preparation. It doesn't even have to be a phone call. It can be an open house. Somebody walks in an open house, yeah. they don't know what the heck to say. So I wanted to make that point, but I've got an agent in the New Orleans metro area that's been really helping me organically promote the event and just doing anything she can to help me. So some of these agents that are being supportive, I am trying to pour into just to pay it forward. And one of the things, so we got a call scheduled on Friday. One of the things she wants to tackle is she's just bad at cold calling. She thinks like a consumer. So I want you to bust the crap out of this myth. She's like, I don't like when telemarketers call me. So I don't want to do that to somebody else. Okay. How is that different? Like, why is it dangerous for one to think like a consumer or to think like you would think if you were a consumer? That's all right. I got you. I got you. So first of all, we can't base what we're going to do on what's happened in the past. If I go and meet with a seller or I call a seller and they told me to go screw myself and F myself and hung up, that doesn't mean that everybody else is going to. So get that drunk monkey off your shoulder. Just because one thing has happened doesn't mean it's going to happen again. You need to stay consistent to what you've been trained to do and what you've been told works. Now, the definition of overthinking is, by definition, the art of creating problems that aren't there. By overthinking about what my seller, my client, or my consumer is going to do when I call them, I'm creating a problem that hasn't even existed yet. And that's going to affect my tonality going into the call. Because if I think I'm going to call you, Jason, you're not going to want to hear it. I'm probably going to be like, hey, Jason, how you doing? This is Jason as well. (laughs) <laughs> Whereas if I am dedicated to my craft and I'm serving you, not selling you, I'm going to call you and be like, hey, Jason, how you doing? This is Jason with Chinati Realty Group. How's 2019 going, brother? It's completely different, but it comes down to practice. Agents ask me all the time, how do you come up with this stuff? It just rolls off your tongue. It's, you're like an artist. I want to be like you. And I'm like, guys, I role play more than all of you combined because every time you're role playing, I'm role playing. Every time I'm hosting a training session with you, I'm training. I'm practicing presenting that session, then I'm presenting it and I'm learning when I do it. I got this way by doing it. And that's what they have to learn. And so don't worry about what one client said to you in the past. Take the action, right? Tony Robbins talks about OPA, outcome, purpose, action. Identify your outcome, right? Have a clearly identified outcome you want to achieve. And then your purpose, your why. Why do you want to achieve that outcome? How's it going to benefit you? Make you a better person, salesperson, agent, mother, father, brother, whatever, and then action. You have to take massive action, but believe it or not, massive results can also come from small actions being taken consistent. Make the call. Go through the motions. Just pick up the phone and dial. So I guarantee you the best way to get positive momentum is to take the action. And positive momentum is the most powerful thing in this freaking world. Once one good thing happens, we ever notice that another good thing happens in another? It's not because it's luck. It's because you're doing the right things. You know, you just, you had the example of one of your agents who is consistently putting $800,000 worth of sales on the pending board, who at one time was just like a negative Nancy and you know just had a bad attitude about this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the conversion rate, I mean, it's just the proof is in the numbers. The path is math. So this stuff works. She's getting in her own way. It's her mindset. Right. She has to focus on what she needs to do is take 30 days and say for the next 30 days, I am going to do this, this, and this, because Jason Will told me it will work. She needs to do it with enthusiasm and excitement. She needs to put her best foot forward every single call, every single day. And then after 30 days, let's look back at her trend. Let's look at how many leads she generated or how many calls she made versus how many appointments she booked. 
And let's compare those numbers to the six months prior. Because I bet in those 30 freaking days, she will have booked more appointments that actually got executed and generated some sort of positive outcome than she ever did prior. Just by taking the time to take the right steps. That's all it comes down to. Speed to lead, war dialing. And when you get them on the phone, don't worry about selling them. Focus on serving them, right? Pivot to the person, not the sale. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right. So to wrap up here, there's been insane value in a matter of minutes. And my other goal, and I'm trying to get very you know, repetitious about this, is that the people that are going to stay through Sunday at the event, so you would essentially get Friday night, Saturday night, but even if you just could, could stay a Friday night, there's going to be a big social component to this event at Impact Agent where we are going to be in like the social setting in the country. So if somebody's listening to this call, I'm like, man, I'd love to have a beer with him, just pick his brain. The nuggets they would get. So that's what I'm really, really looking forward to is putting some meetups together, going out in big groups and just hanging out, having fun, building relationships and talking shop. One of the greatest things about this event is that the people that you have speaking, it's not like there's someone extraordinary. Like I'm just like everybody else. I'm nothing, you know, I'm not more special than anybody who's not on stage, but that's why it's great because I want to interact with everybody. I'm a mean dancer. I fist pump like a northerner. I do a mean worm as well. But I want to build relationships and connect with people. And like I said, my passion in life is helping people overcome obstacles that they don't think they can. And that's why I love this team, this job. And that's why I can't wait to come out there and meet everybody and maybe fist pump, throw a couple back and do the one. Oh, it's going to be a good time. And I'm going to have as many people with cameras as I can (laughs) and putting it all together on film because it's going to be incredible. Jason, get back to work. I really appreciate it, man. You crushed it. Hey, hurrah, sir. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Impact Agent Podcast. If you like the show and got something out of it, please like the Impact Agent Podcast on Facebook and rate and review the show on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. This really helps us grow the show and helps other agents find it. Please share it with your friends and coworkers as well. You want us to deliver the show to you via email every week? Then email me at jason at impactagentuniversity.com and we'll send you the show every week. Please let us know what you think about the show, what you like, what you don't, or possibly make a suggestion about a topic you want to hear. Email me at jason at impactagentuniversity.com or leave us a message on Facebook at Impact Agent Podcast. Until next week, everybody be productive, safe, and happy, and always keep learning. This podcast is produced by Johnny Gwynn at Deep Broad Studios in Mobile, Alabama, and is paid for and powered by impactagentuniversity.com.